Good evening, Evans. Good evening, sir. Dinner is served, Mr. Keston. Thank you. Good evening, my dear. You're more beautiful than ever this evening. Mrs. Kessler first, Evans. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. How's Dad taking it? All right, Miss Virginia. They're having dinner. I'll answer it. Hello, Virginia. I told you not to come here this evening, Ralph. Why? Didn't you want to see me? Well, it, it isn't that I didn't want to see you. You're certainly acting strange, darling. What's all the mystery about? Let's go into the library. Ralph! After dinner, we are taking a long walk. I'd like to speak to you, Ralph. What's come over your father, Virginia? Is that why you didn't want me here tonight? Yes. It stopped me cold. I'm sorry if I accidentally stumbled on something you didn't want me to know. Well, it must seem weird to someone who's never seen it before. It happens once a year. You always appeared perfectly rational to me. Well, there's something I must tell you. It's about my mother. I don't understand. Well, it happened several years ago. My father and mother were apparently as happy as two people could be. He worshipped her. Another man. The usual best friend. It almost broke my father's heart. He seems reconciled, but he never forgets their wedding anniversary and celebrates it that way. Guess he isn't the only one who resorts to make believe, but it does give one an uncanny feeling. Well, it doesn't frighten me anymore. Now that you know. I love you. You wanted your coat, Miss Kessler. Oh, oh yes, thank you. I was going to take a drive. It's such a beautiful night. Come along? Yes, of course. Sure you don't mind going? No, no, I'd love it. We'll be back in an hour, Cecile. Yes, miss. Young man of Miss Virginia's. I guess so. If he wasn't, Miss Virginia wouldn't bother with him. Does she plan to marry him? I never discuss things that aren't my business. If you want to stay here, I suggest you don't be so curious. Well, just the same. I think this is a crazy house. And what about those murders? Jules here says there's been a lot of them. And nobody's ever been able to find out who did the killing. You talk too much, Jules. But I only said that. Now, excuse me, Mr. Seal. Come, I'll show you where we keep our linens.
Mrs. Kessler. Oh, Mrs. Kessler, I brought you your dinner. Oh, please, Mrs. Kessler, I gotta go home. Oh, I want to go home, too. Oh, but you are home. And as soon as you feel better, I'm going to take you to your husband and daughter. But they never write to me. Oh, but they don't know where you are, Mrs. Kessler. Nobody knows that but me. You see, I found I'm you. running away. We're running away in a car. We're going faster, faster, faster. We're going to crash. We're going to crash. Can't go home now. Can I? Mrs. Kessler, please. Please eat your dinner. I've got to go home. I'll be back in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Kessler. Good night. You're late again, Jules. I'm sorry, Mama. But I just couldn't get away from her. <laughs> Jules, why don't you tell Mr. Kessler about his wife, that you're hiding her? Oh, I haven't got the heart, Mom. It would kill him if he saw her the way she is. Poor thing. She'd be better off if she died with that man when that car was wrecked. Uh, I guess so. Jules, I've been thinking, maybe she had something to do with all these horrible murders. Oh, oh, oh she wouldn't hurt nobody. She's like a child. She's still dazed from the accident, you know, amnesia. But she'll be better soon, then I'll take her home. But if they found out I've been hiding her, they might think I had something to do with the murder. Jules, you must tell Mr. Kessler. Oh, no, no, Mama. We must never tell anyone. Never. Sure you won't come in? No, thanks, darling. I think I'd better run along. <laughs> Good night, Ralph. Oh, Virginia! Shall I put your car away? No, thanks. Evans will take care of it. All right. Night! Good evening, Miss Virginia. Would you please put my car in the garage when you have a moment? Yes, miss. Casanova. Have you gone crazy? The only chance I had to see you. You ignored my letters and my telephone calls. Did you think that you could get rid of me as easy as all that? Be quiet. They'll hear you. You bet they will. And you're going to listen to me, too. I'm not giving up to that Kessler girl or anybody else. But this is different, Cecile. I never said I loved you. Are you in love with her? Yes. Well, you're not marrying her, understand? Nothing's going to stand in the way of my happiness. Not even you. Don't threaten me. She'll have to know about us sooner or later. And besides, I'll make you a good wife, Ralph. I promise I will. Guess what? What? I'm in love. Ralph? Yes, yes. He's a fine boy. I am so happy for you, my dear. Oh, he hasn't asked me to marry him yet, but he will. I know he will. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, my pet. Good night, sweet. Good night, Evans. Uh, Good night, Miss Virginia. Uh, can I do anything for you, sir, before I retire? What happened to your hand, Evans? Oh, nothing, sir. I heard it when I was putting Miss Virginia's car in the garage. Put anything on it? Oh, the bandage. Oh, you may have an infection. How's that? Just like new, sir. I guess I'll eat for a while. Good night, Evans. Good night, sir. Oh, yes, Evans, sir. 
thank you for the dinner. Yes, sir. I'm afraid to come home. You'd kill me. You'd kill anybody. To see you.
If it's exercise you want, there's plenty of it in the kitchen. Cecile! the new maid. I think she's dead. Dead? How did it happen? I don't know, sir. I thought she was taking her exercises. Call the police. I'll see what I can do. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Kessler, we're up to our ears in another one. The girl was killed the same way as the chauffeur six months ago. The only thing we could find was this note left by some fellow who wanted to give her the air. It's terrible, Lieutenant. She was so young. If we could find out who killed Cecile, we have the one who committed all the other murders. That's easier said than done. There's never been fingerprints, to say nothing of motives. What gets me, Mr. Kessler, is why you refuse to move out of this place. Sentimental reasons. There's nothing very sentimental about a house where anything could happen and usually does. My mother lived here, Lieutenant. Oh, I see. You're the gardener? Yes, but, but I wasn't here. I went home early. You see, I live with my wife. All right, all right, all right. And please don't try to see me. Signed, Ralph. Ralph? Do you know him? Oh, I'm certain I don't. Well, the name started me. I'm, I'm practically engaged to a Ralph. Did you notice anything unusual last night, Evans? Well, maybe I've been not say. Let's have it, Evans. When I was putting the roaster in the garage, I saw Cecile talk to Mr. Dixon. That's Miss Virginia's wife. Go on. I didn't mean to listen, but they were talking loud. Then I heard him say that he never loved her. And she said she wasn't going to let him marry anyone else. And that made him real mad. They said nothing was going to stand between him and his happiness. Not even her. I knew Cecile a couple of years. She offered me the companionship I needed. Then I met you and fell in love for the first time. I love you too, Ralph. Surely you can account for your activities from the time you left our house until the next morning. No, Mr. Kessler. I had a lot to think about. I took a long ride into the country, didn't stop anywhere, and didn't see a soul I knew. Mm. It's most unfortunate. All I know is that I... I didn't kill her. There isn't any doubt about that in our minds. Don't worry, son. We do everything we possibly can. Order. Order in the courtroom. You saw Miss Ward tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I managed the apartments where Ralph Dixon lived. Miss Mannix came there often. As a matter of fact, I thought they were married. I went home early and helped my wife with the house cleaning. The coroner's testimony should convince you that the defendant had sufficient reason for wanting to be rid of the victim. It's the truth. Said he would let nothing stand in the way of his happiness. Not even her. possibly can. Tomorrow we're going to see the governor. Oh, and I'm sure something can be done. But governor, the man is innocent. If you would only grant a stay of execution. If you knew him, you'd realize he couldn't possibly be a murderer. I'm sorry. I've gone over the facts in the case. And unless you can present some new evidence, there's nothing I can do. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes? I see. It's all over. My name is Dixon. Yes, of course. I'd like to see Mr. Kessler. He's in there. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, Ralph. It can't be. Apparently, my brother never told you about me. Come in. I've been in South America. I flew here at once. However, I'm afraid it's too late to do any good. So you're Ralph's brother. Who oh, knew about you, but I, I never expected such a striking resemblance. Sorry to have startled you. And this is my daughter, Virginia. How do you do? Won't you join us? I've had my dinner, thanks, but uh, I would like to talk to you. Do I look pale? No. Huh? I feel pale. The buzzer, Evans. What's the matter, you deep? Did he have a good attorney? Oh, one of the very best. He's handled all of Dad's legal affairs for years. Evans, Mr. Dixon will have coffee with us. Oh, I'm Ralph Dixon's brother. Well, you sure had me going for a minute. But you do look like poor Mr. Ralph. Uh, coffee. Yes, sir. I realize how incriminating circumstantial evidence can be, but it's never brought home to me like this before. We did everything we possibly could. You know that Ralph and my daughter were quite serious about each other. Yes, he told me in his last letter. Sit up. How long do you plan to stay in this country? Haven't decided yet, Mr. Kessler, but I would like to find out who killed that girl. Mm. It's something I would like to know, too. Please consider this your home while you're here. If there's anything I can do, don't hesitate. Oh, thank you. I see that your room is put in order. Are you sure I'm not troubling you? No, no, not at all. And the pain for till I come back. Good night, Virginia. Good night, Paul. Good night, Dad. Come in. I hope you'll be comfortable. I sent for your luggage in the morning. It's awfully nice of you, Mr. Kessler. Really, I it's hope It's a pleasure that... to have you. Thank you, sir. Well, I guess I'll turn in. I haven't had much sleep the last couple of nights. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. 
Give me the police department. No. The body has not been touched. Yes. All right. Good morning, Evans. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. Now, what's the matter? The gardener, sir. What? He's been murdered. Murdered? Strangled. Well, here we go again. How long do you work for you? Oh, about three years, I guess. Ever say anything to you about having any enemies? No, sir. Were you home last night? Yes, Lieutenant. To your knowledge, did anybody come in or go out of the house during the course of the evening? We have a house guest. Why isn't he here? I'll get him. Oh, don't trouble yourself, Mr. Kester. Where is he? He's upstairs in his bedroom. Let's have a look at him, Ryan. Good morning. You want it in the kitchen. In the kitchen? Yeah. Am I seeing things? He's Ralph's brother. Why, well, he's the image of him. How did this happen? That's what we'd like to find out. He was strangled, Paul. Would you mind if we go into the library? No, that's all right. Better wait here for the coroner, Ryan. Not you, Evans. Hey, where were you on the night of January the 13th? Have you had your coffee yet? No. Well, I guess that's that. No clues, no fingerprints, no motive, nothing. But surely if a man was choked to death, there would be imprints on his throat. Hmm. There weren't any on the Mannix, girl. And they were killed the same way, is that right? That doesn't prove a thing, Dixon. All the others got it, and always the same way. The corner's here. Okay. I'll be right back. What does he mean by the others? Just that. Others have been killed here. Why in the world do you stay in this place? We can't leave. Oh, Evans. Uh, your luggage, sir. I I'll put them in your room. What about these other murders? I'll put your luggage in your room, sir. Oh, 
Well, Lieutenant. Yeah? Uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, there'll be a change anyhow. What's bothering you? As a rule, I'm not a very curious person, but... Oh, um, I was beginning to get you, huh? In a way, yes. What about these other murders? Well, there's been quite a lot of them, Dixon. Some of the best brains in the department have tried to solve them. But we always run up against a stone wall. Weren't the other murders brought out in my brother's trial? That was different. That was a cut and dried case. Why haven't the police closed the house? Oh, we tried to, but Mr. Kessler took it to court. Carries a lot of weight around here. He does a lot of good, too. You think he'd want to leave? Uh, I guess he's waiting for his wife to come back. She left him several years ago. An awful scandal at the time. Front page stuff and all that. Poor devil. He didn't have a chance. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll be running along. Glad I met you, Dixon. Good day, Lieutenant. Well, this isn't a very pleasant way to entertain a guest. You know, Mr. Kessler, I have a feeling that somehow or other these mysterious murders are going to be cleared up, and quickly, too. Nothing would please me more. Your wife? Yes. She's beautiful. I rarely talk about her, but I think about her constantly. She has eyes like Virginia. Her hair, her skin, they were the loveliest I've ever seen. I hope you have the pleasure of meeting her. She'll be back someday. Hello there. Paul was admiring your mother's picture. Father's a sentimentalist. He has every right to be. I'll get it. Hello. Yes. Just a moment, please. It's for you, Dad. Thank you. Yes? Yes, I guess I can. Yes. Oh, in about 20 minutes, I'd say. Surely. Goodbye. I'll see you children later. Business. Sorry. That's the only information I can give you, Mr. Kirby. Have you notified his wife? Yes, Mr. Kessler. Poor thing, she took it quite hard. It's terrible. Oh. I want to see the coroner. Yes? And Jules' wife. Where have they taken it? In there, Mrs. Mason. Sir, may I have one moment alone with him? I won't ever see him again. Well, uh, yes, I guess so. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Mason, Mrs. Mason. You'd better take her out, Mr. Kirby. He's alive. What? He's alive. I saw him move. I'll get the hospital. You'll be all right, Mrs. Mason. Steady now. Get him out of here. He's not dead. The doctor will be here any minute. Jules. Please, Mrs. Mason. Jules, listen to me. Did you recognize the man who tried to kill you? It was ghastly. I don't believe I was ever more startled in my life than when Mrs. Mason screamed. It must have been a terrific shock to see him come back to life. Yes, it was. Just a few moments longer, and I would have known who the assailant was. I don't like to bring up the subject, Mr. Kessler, but these murders, did they ever happen in the daytime? No, I don't believe so. I see. You evidently have some reason for asking. Uh, not particularly. I was just curious about that one point. 
Yes, uh, sorry dinner is late tonight, sir. But the new cook is having quite a time getting started. That's all right. Evans been with you long? Over some years. Everything's gone wrong today. Now I burned the roast. Oh, don't get so flustered. You'll be all right. I was so anxious to make good, I want to say. How is that mixing spoon? Yeah, it is. Right in front of you. Thanks. I like it here. It's nice. Everything's so quiet and peaceful, like. Ever read the newspapers? No. They're just full of trash and murders and stuff. Mm -hmm. What you don't know, well, it's all right. Here, here's your pepper salt. Well, Paul, I'm afraid you have me cornered. You still have a couple of moves, Mr. Kessler. <laughs> You've met your equal, Dad. Oh, your father just got himself into a bad position. Hmm. You got to be a storm. It's your game, Paul. Want to play another? No, oh, thank you. Not tonight. It's getting late. Pardon me, sir. Yes? But may I speak to you a moment, please? Oh, yes, certainly. Uh, the cook wants to leave. I thought you should know. Why? She just came. She feels if her work is unsatisfactory. She has so much trouble with dinner tonight. Why, that's ridiculous. Oh, I understand. It's her first day. I'll speak to her. I'll say good night, Mr. Kessler. Think I'll turn in. Thanks for the game. Good night, Paul. Good night, Dad. Good night, child. I'll walk up with you, Paul. Oh, glad to have your company. It's a long, lonesome climb up those stairs all alone. Where are you going, Marie? You can't leave us after cooking such an elegant dinner. Did you really like it, Mr. Kessler? Why, I never tasted anything to equal that roast beef. Besides, you can't go now. It's going to rain in a minute. Are you sure you want me to stay? Oh, certainly, Marie. Oh, well, I like it here, but I thought... Oh, then it is settled. Oh, wait till you taste my apple pie, Mr. Kessler. Apple pie? Mm -hmm. My, that will be a treat. <laughs> oh, let me take this. You, you might as well unpack your things, yes, Marie. Yes, sure. Thank you, sir. Not at all, Marie. Good night. Good night, Mr. Kessler. Oh, he's a wonderful man. Now, let's see. What did I do wrong?
Mr. Kessler. Mr. Kessler, are you ill? What? Something wrong? Hello, Paul. I must have walked in my sleep. Well, you did better than I. I couldn't sleep at all. It's raining. Why don't you go to bed, Paul? I'm all right. Is there anything I can do? Nothing, Paul. Thank you. I think I'll read for a while. Good night. Good night, Mr. Kessler. You look like you had a good night's sleep, Mr. Kessler. I was so tired when I got to bed, I don't even remember climbing in. Dad! Who would do a thing like that? I wonder if anyone was hurt. Nothing could have hurt my father more. It's unquestionably the work of a madman. You're right, Evans. 
Uh, yes, sir, Mrs. Kessler. Good morning, sir. Where is the new cook? She says she'll go shopping first thing this morning. Have you looked in her room? No, sir. There's a valise. She didn't leave. I'm not worried about that. When did she tell you she's going to the market? Last night before she went to bed. Do you think there's any connection between this and what has happened before? I don't know. Have you been through the rest of the house yet? No, sir. Good morning, Mr. Kessler. Oh, Marie. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. Thank you. I wonder why he was so glad to see me. Mr. Kessler thought you had been murdered. Oh, he's so sweet. I'm going to start to make that apple pie. Right. Murdered? <laughs> I can't imagine who would do a thing like that. I'll get it. Good morning, Miss Kessler. Won't you come in? Thank you. That happened last night. Didn't it fall? No. Find me the person who did it and you've got your murderer. Nobody came into this house last night. Ryan and his boys were stationed outside. Lieutenant. Oh, Lieutenant. You didn't hear any noises during the night? No, but there's funny things going on around here. Meaning what? Well, this happened three times now. I put food on the sink, left the room. When I come back, it was gone. No. You ought to hire a detective to watch it. <laughs> That's what you get for being such an excellent cook. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, Lieutenant. Yeah? You got something? I don't know why. I found this in the picture. Anybody else know about it? No, I wanted to speak to you first. Okay. I'll see if I can match it. Keep the others downstairs. <laughs> Why not? I agree. <laughs> Is uh, this yours, Mr. Kessler? Yes. Why? I thought I'd seen it on you. Found it in Evans' room. Well, there's nothing strange about that. There wouldn't be, Mr. Kessler, but it so happens that a thread from this robe was found embedded in the picture. Surely you're not trying to accuse Evans. Oh, it's incredible. You're just trying to make a case. Well, somebody's been doing these killings. Ryan didn't die of heart failure. Don't forget that. When did you give Evans that robe, Mr. Kessler? I don't remember giving it to him at all. But naturally, when my things need mending, he just picks them up. I don't care how he got it. He had it and he used it on that picture. I'm going to talk to him. Uh, just a minute, Lieutenant. Yeah? If Evans is the man we want, it strikes me you've got to have more evidence. <laughs> now, everybody wants to be a detective. Oh, wait a minute. Perhaps Paul has some suggestion. All right, go ahead. What is it? Without doubt, the murderer is insane. The picture tells us that. I believe we should call in a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist. You still got the robe. But before Evans is accused, I'm definitely in favor of giving him a sanity test. What do you say, Lieutenant? Okay. Maybe I better take one myself. All we want to know is if the fellow's crazy. That's very easy to determine. Shall we make the examination here? If you don't mind, doctor. Please tell Evans I want to see him and then go up to your room. Go to my room? Is it possible, doctor, for a man to be normal, say, for two or three months at a time, then go completely insane for an hour or two? Yes, quite common. This should be most interesting. Now what? A fuse must have blown. I light the candles.
fuse burned burnt out, Miss Virginia. Oh, thank you. My father wants to see you, Evans. He's in his room. Yes, miss. That'll have to do, gentlemen, until the lights are fixed. I'll be in my room, Evans. Yes, miss. Sorry, Mr. Kessler, but we ran out of fuses. I sent Marie over to the store to get some more, sir. That's all right, Evans. Sit down. Oh, pardon me, sir. Oh, go ahead, Evans. Sit down. We want to talk to you. All right, sit down. Do you want to speak to me, sir? This gentleman would like to ask you a few questions, Evans. Yes, sir. Do you know these men? Yes, sir. What's this gentleman's name? Mr. Kessler. Mr. Charles Kessler, sir. Would you say that Mr. Kessler is out of his mind? I, I don't understand you. Would you say that he is insane? No, sir. Sister, it's yours. Leave me alone. I'm going home. Home to my husband. And my daughter. Of course you are. And we know where you live, too. You do? Sure. But I'm dead, you understand? I'm dead. Of course you are. I'll take you where you want to go. Now you just come with me, young lady. Tell me, Evans, do you think this man is crazy? Now, don't ask him that, Doc. I'm beginning to have doubts myself. Please, Lieutenant. Oh, all right, all right. Am I crazy? I don't think so. You don't think so? I know that woman. She's wicked. She can't go home. Yes. Yes, I know. She's bad. Now, you come with me. There we are. Ever see this before? Yes, sir. What were you doing with it last night? I don't know what you're talking about, sir. anybody. It's Kessler. Take her out quickly.
door. Now you sit right there, and we'll see that you get home all right. What are we done? Hey, give me a hand, George. She's dead. What happened here? We've got the murderer. Evans. No, Mr. Kessler. You. I knew you'd come back. Nothing can part us now, my darling. myself. I'm Watson Pritchard. In just a minute, I'll show you the only really haunted house in the world. Since it was built a century ago, seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. Since then, I've owned the house. I've only spent one night there, and when they found me in the morning, I, I was almost dead. Frederick Lauren, and I've rented the house on Haunted Hill tonight so that my wife can give a party, a haunted house party. <laughs> She's so amusing. There'll be food and drink and ghosts, and perhaps even a few murders. You're all invited. If any of you will spend the next 12 hours in this house, I'll give you each $10,000, or your next of kin in case you don't survive. Ah, but here come our other guests. It was my wife's idea to have our guests come in funeral cars. She's so amusing. Her sense of humor is, shall we say, original. I dreamed up the hearse. It's empty now, but after a night in the house on Haunted Hill, who knows? This is Lance Schroeder, a test pilot. So no doubt a brave man. But don't you think you can be much braver if you're paid for it? And I happen to know that Lance needs the 10,000 I'll give him, if he's brave enough to stay all night. This is Ruth Bridges. You've no doubt read her column in the newspapers. She says her reason for coming to the party is to write a feature article on ghosts. She's also desperate for money, gambles, 
You've already met Watson Pritchard, a man living in mortal fear of a house, and yet he is risking his life to spend another night here. I wonder why. He says for money. This is Dr. David Trent, a psychiatrist. He claims that my ghost will help his work on hysteria. But don't you see a little touch of greed there around the mouth and eyes? This is Nora Manning. I picked her from the thousands of people who work for me because she needed the 10,000 more than most. Supports her whole family. Isn't she pretty? The party's starting now, and you have until midnight to find the house on Haunted Hill. everybody. It isn't a very warm welcome, is it? Only the ghosts in this house are glad we're here. Are we all strangers to each other? Don't you two know each other? I'm afraid I don't even know your name. I'm Nora Manning. Lance Schroeder. Is Frederick Lauren a friend of yours? I've heard of him, but I've never met him. I work for one of his companies, but I've never seen him. I've never met the man either. Just a phone call. Do you know him? No. Well, then you're the only one of us who does. I don't know him. All the details about running the house were done by mail. He's quite wealthy, isn't he? Millions. And uh, five wives, I believe. Four, I think, so far. A $50,000 party for only five people is a little steep, even for a millionaire. <laughs> well, if I were going to haunt anybody, this would certainly be the house I'd do it in. Who closed the door? This thing's made of solid steel.
Annabelle. Our guests are here and fortunately still alive. Is your face on yet? Dust and dirt everywhere, and the water barely trickles. Couldn't you have had the place cleaned? Atmosphere, darling. You know how ghosts are. They never tidy up. Well, that's a very fetching outfit, but hardly suitable for a party. I'm not going to the party. Mm, the spend the night ghost party was your idea, remember? Since it's going to cost me $50,000, I want you to have fun. The party was my idea until you invited all the guests. Why all these strangers? Why none of our friends? Friends? Do we have any friends? No, your jealousy took care of that. I had a reason for inviting each guest. I wanted kind of a cross-section, from psychiatrist to typist, and from drunk to jet pilot. They share one thing, they all need money. Now let's see if they're brave enough to earn it. And you call this a party? Could be. Why do you always do that? It spoils the champagne. It might explode. Never does. Would you guarantee that? That isn't funny, Frederick. Make a good headline. Playboy kills wife with champagne cork. Will you join me? No, thank you. Just a sip might improve your humor. My humor is fine, thanks. And I haven't poisoned it. It's always good to know that. Have some. You'll enjoy the party more. Go on. Your trust is so touching. And I'm not going to the party. Of all my wives, you are the least agreeable. But still alive. Hmm. Would you go away for a million dollars, tax-free? You want it all, don't you? I deserve it all. Your jealousy isn't tax-free, and your possessiveness is maddening. If ever a man had grounds for divorce... But can't prove them. The time will come. You'll slip up one of these days. Think so? If I live long enough. You remember the fun we had when you poisoned me? <laughs> Something you ate, the doctor said. Yes. Arsenic on the rocks. Annabelle, you'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? Darling, what makes you think that? Something about you. I hear that hanging is very uncomfortable, in case you get any more ideas. Now don't let the ghosts and the ghouls disturb you, darling. Darling, the only ghoul in the house is you. And don't sit up all night thinking of ways to get rid of me. It makes wrinkles. This is what she used on my brother and her sister. Hacked them to pieces. We found parts of the bodies all over the house. In places you wouldn't think. Funny thing is, the heads have never been found. Hands and feet and things like that. But no heads. The wife, probably in a rage, threatened her husband with a knife and then, carried away by hysteria, took a swing at him and simply went on from there. Well, she certainly went on. How many people did she kill, Mr. Pritchard? Only two. Her husband and her sister. No one else was here. So there are two loose heads just floating around in here somewhere? You can hear them at night. They whisper to each other and then cry. <laughs> Since our host isn't here, would anyone care to mix me a drink? Certainly. What will you have? Good evening. I'm your host, Frederick Lauren. Since we're all strangers to each other, let's get acquainted with a drink, shall we? Mr. Lauren, I advise you to call this party off now. The ghosts are already moving, and that's a bad sign. Let me apologize for my wife. She'll join us later. What do you have? Scotch and. Doctor? I'll have the same. Now, before the party begins, let's go over the details. 
The caretakers will leave at midnight, locking us in here until they come back in the morning. Once the door is locked, there's no way out. The windows have bars that a jail would be proud of, and the only door to the outside locks like a vault. There's no electricity, no phone, no one within miles, so no way to call for help. Like a coffin. So if any of you decide not to stay for the party, you must let me know before midnight. Of course, if you leave, I shan't be able to pay you anything. I'm interested in your reasons for this uh, party. Aside from the pleasant company. Ghosts, Doctor. And now my wife has given us all the opportunity to find out. Hmm. Amusing. Ghosts, etc., being only creations of hysteria, your party should be a success. Well, Pritchard here promises us genuine ghosts. Seven now. Maybe more before morning. That's cheerful. Four men have been murdered in this house. And three women. You planned your party very well, Mr. Lauren. Four of us are men, three are women. A ghost for everybody. <laughs> well, Pritchard, why don't you take us on a tour through the house and let's see what happens, huh? See that stain? Blood. A young girl was killed here. And whatever got her wasn't human. Don't stand there. What do you mean? Where? It's too late. They've marked you. Ridiculous. The roof probably leaks. Well, that must be what it is. Who would want to haunt me? I would say any self-respecting male ghost. I hope it doesn't come back. Well, Mr. Pritchard, you're the life of the party. He hasn't even started yet. Wasn't there a man who threw his wife into a wine vat or something? That was in the cellar. There's been a murder almost every place in this house. and threw her in. She was supposed to stay down. But the bones came up. It's a funny thing. But none of the murders here were just ordinary. Just shooting or stabbing. They've all been sort of wild. Violent and different. Look out! God, she didn't fall in. You mean there's still acid in there? Destroys everything with hair and flesh. Just leaves the bones. My, it's dry and dusty down here. Well, there's a, a cure for that upstairs. <laughs> Come on. Everybody would get $10,000. But he didn't say anything about being locked in. No. Uh, 
He just made a deal with me on the phone, but nothing about having to stay. Aren't you going to stay? If I don't, I lose $10,000. I'm going to stay, too. $10,000. Yeah. You believe in ghosts? I don't know. Well, I agree with what that doc says. You can spook yourself. I've done it in planes. Seen things that weren't really there. Or were they? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with your 10000 If we get it. What do you mean, if we get it? Won't he pay us if we stay? Ah, sure he will. 10000 is no more to him than a nickel is to us. So many doors. Closet. Does it go anywhere? Money won't cure. I must, I must have bumped my head. And the only way you could bump your head in here is to run head on into the wall. You didn't do that, did you? Let's get a bandage on that. I wonder why they didn't kill him. He didn't bump his head. They hit him. They? Nora, when you came in, you said something about a ghost. There was something. What did it look like? Well, it, it was wearing a black thing that went all the way to the floor. Weren't you a little frightened at the time? Well, yes. That, Mr. Lauren, is hysteria. But then, Doctor, how do you explain what happened to Lance? Was that hysteria, too? You better get that checked in a day or so. Thanks, Doc. Ghosts are coming closer, Mr. Lauren. You really believe in your pet ghost, don't you, Pritchard? Before the night's over, you will, too. Would you like a drink, Lance? Uh, no, thanks. I'd like one. Got your hand. Mr. 
Lauren, are you really going to pay anyone who stays all night? Certainly. Ten thousand dollars. Will there be much red tape or delay? You in a hurry, dear? <laughs> Frankly, yes. Or frantically. There you are, my dear. Or something was in here when I came in. But where? And if the door was locked, how did it get out? What you saw might have been a ghost, Nora, but what was in here with me was no ghost. I don't know. I was so scared. That sound different to you? run it just floats yeah but uh, why didn't I see it you don't believe me <laughs> can I I'm Annabelle Lauren. You must be Miss Manning. I realize this is a very unusual and I'm afraid very dull party. Wouldn't you like to freshen up? This is your room. Depressing, isn't it? I doubt if I'll spend much time here. It's going to rain. Perfect atmosphere for my husband's party. Why did you come here? He said he'd give me $10,000. Why did he pick you? I don't know. My supervisor just came and said I'd been invited. How long have you known my husband? I just met him tonight. So? Why you? What were you doing wandering around by yourself? Well, I was in the cellar with Lance, Mr. Schroeder, and I just left, that's all. Don't do it again. Don't go anywhere in this house by yourself. Now fix your face and I'll come by for you in a few minutes. But I... You're in danger. We all are. But who? I hope for your sake you never find out.
I'm Annabelle Lauren. Were you looking for something? Uh, not exactly. Are you the doctor? No. No, I'm Lance Schroeder. The pilot. You've hurt yourself. Oh, it's uh, just a bump on the head. Which is my room? I believe this is it. Thank you, Mrs. Lauren. Annabelle Lance. You were with the young girl in the cellar. Why was she so upset? Was she? And you don't look like the type to go around bumping his head. What really happened, Lance? Well, Nora thought she saw a ghost, but uh, I didn't see anything. She was just frightened then. And mad at me, I think. I kidded her about it. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happens here tonight. Now, don't tell me you're taking all this seriously. Aren't you? Well, I'd uh, like to find out what hit me. Lance. If I need help, may I count on you? <laughs> sure, I guess so. Look, what's going on here, anyway? I mean, what is with this party, bit? This is no party. He's planning something. Your husband? I wish I knew what it was. Must be pretty big if he's going to lay out 50,000. The money doesn't mean anything. He has a reason for getting us all up here to this dreadful old house. Well, what for? He doesn't even know us. Maybe that's exactly why you're here. Well, what can he get away with? Oh, he thinks that big money like his can get away with anything. You know, of course, that I'm his fourth wife. The first simply disappeared. The other two died. Lance, I don't want to join them. You mean he, uh... Oh, his doctor said they died of heart attacks. Two girls in their 20s. Well, what can he do? My husband is sometimes insane with jealousy. Nothing matters to him then. Please be careful. Would he hurt you? He would kill me if he could. all the fun. Nora Manning was almost killed by a falling chandelier. The pilot bashed his head in. Is he badly hurt? The Saturnine psychiatrist bandaged him up. Don't you want to go and console him, as you do most men, in your fashion? You're so clever, Frederick. Yes, I lie awake nights wondering why I married you. It was rather a mistake. You didn't marry me, dear. I married you. Unpleasant, but no mistake. Hurry up. Frederick, for the last time, I'm not going to your party. And for the last time, it's not my party, but yours. And you are going. I am not. You ready, dear? No. Are you ready, dear? Yes, damn you. But you adore me as much if I were poor. <laughs> no. All you want to be is a lovely widow. It's almost time to lock up the house. And then your party will really begin. I wonder how it'll end. It's close to midnight, Lance. Okay. I'll be down in a minute. Who is it? Your host, my dear. It's almost midnight, Nora. We're all going to get together down in the living room. All right, Mr. Lloyd. I'll be right down.
at us before he kills you. Where's Nora? Miss Manning. I don't want to stay here. Nora, what happened? That's Jonas Slides and his wife. They've been caretakers here for years. She's blind, you know. I'm not going to stay here. Well, Doctor, it looks like we have a real case of hysteria on our hands. I think she's just a little upset, not hysterical. Good evening. Hello, my dear. This is my wife. These are our guests. Ruth Bridges, Dr. Trent. You know Watson Pritchard, of course. Nora Manning, and uh, this is Lance Schroeder. Get me out of here. Now, what about the 10,000? I don't care. He wants to kill me. Who wants to kill you? Mr. Lawrence. May I have your attention, please? I think you all remember the bargain we made about staying all night. $10,000 apiece. If any of you don't survive, $50,000 will be divided amongst the rest of you. If I should die, you will be paid by my estate. When the door is locked from the outside by the caretakers, we'll all be forced to stay in this house until morning. If any of you decide not to stay, you must leave with the caretakers now. You won't have a chance to change your minds later, because there'll be no way to get out. I don't want to stay. Wait. <laughs> Yet, who told them they could leave? They never leave before midnight. Well, they've gone now. I was going to ask you whether you wanted to stay or not, but it seems that the caretakers have made the decision for you. We're all locked in now. But I don't want to stay. Well, I'm sorry, my dear, but it's too late now. Darling, haven't you had enough of the silly game? Get some cars up here for these people and let them go home. But pay them first. This is your party, remember? In spite of my wife's faith in my ability to do the impossible, we will all have to stay in this house until 8 o'clock in the morning. But we have some party favors for you in these little coffins. This is my wife's idea. I must say, I think it's rather dangerous. I suppose you all know how to use one of these things, but in case you don't, you just press down on this lever with your thumb and then pull the trigger. You see, they're loaded. These are no good against the dead, only the living. Doctor? Lance? Nora. Go ahead and take it. Miss Bridges. And here's yours, dear. I don't need it. It was your idea. Who knows, you may want to use it on me before this night is over. Throw these guns away. They won't do you any good. I agree with Pritchard on that point, although not for the same reason. Dr. Trent, don't you approve of our little party favors? Suppose Nora had had a gun when she mistook the blind woman for a ghost. 
I don't think anyone else is going to walk around in total darkness. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we're not going to go running around the house shooting each other, aren't you? Who knows? Fear makes people do amazing things. Mr. Pritchard, you said your sister-in-law killed a man and a woman here and cut them up? You said they found hands and feet, but they never found any heads. Would you like to see one of those heads? Would you all like to see one of those heads? Well then, just follow me. Darling, I really don't need this. my suitcase. Just go look. But it was in there. A woman's head. Nora, I think you're a little upset. Would you care for a sedative? Get out! Get out, all of you! All of you, get out of here! I think it's all right to leave her by herself, Doctor. I wish she'd taken the sedative. Well, what do you suppose she thought she saw? They're closing in on her. Look, Doc, I think somebody ought to stay with her. There could be a million people around her. And if they wanted her, they'd get her. What if he's right? Oh, he's too drunk to know what he's talking about. I wonder. I'll join you in a minute. Do you think it would do any good if you went in and talked to her? Well, do you think there really was a head in her suitcase? I don't know. A thing like that would put me right over the edge. But would you sort of stay up here, I mean, in case she needs help? All right. I'll be in my room. Just call if you want. Thanks. Are you sure there are only seven people in this house? Positive, except for the ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts, nor in frightening women. In Nora's case, it's gone far enough, perhaps too far. What do you suggest we do about it, Doctor? Don't frighten her anymore. What do you know about this? They've taken her. In a little while, she'll be one of them. Where's Nor? Where is she? It's too late. It's too late. You'll never find her again. Pritchard, if you know where she is, you better tell me now. She's gone. She's gone with them. And there's nothing you can do about it.
Nora? She's dead, Mr. Lauren. Your wife hanged herself. Suicide. this? I don't know. It was, it was dark, but it must have been him. Has anybody seen you since he left you? I heard some people in that room, but I went by and nobody saw me. Mrs. Lauren is dead. How? Lauren said she committed suicide, but I think somebody killed her. Him? I'm sure you've come to the same conclusion I have. Yeah, I think so. Well, let's all have a meeting, discuss what to do. The living room? Okay, in a minute. I've got to go downstairs. Now, you lock yourself in here and don't let anybody know you're here. If he thinks you're dead, he won't come here. And I'll get back as soon as I can. You'll be all right. And if you have to, you use it. What are you doing in here? Wait, don't we? What do you mean, coming in here? I didn't want them to take her away. You're drunk. They will if you don't watch her. You're drunk. All right, out with it, Bridget. Why did you come into this room? I'm the only one who understands. Understands what? Your wife isn't there anymore. She's already joined them. Now, Bridget, I've had enough of your spook talk. Get out, you sot, and don't come back into this room again.
Where's what's her name? Nora. I didn't disturb her since I don't think this concerns her. No, you're right. Mr. Lauren, isn't there some way we can get out of this house now? No, none at all. We could try breaking out. The only door to the outside is made of steel. The bars of the windows are set in solid stone. We've got to stay. I'm not afraid of your ghosts, Bridget. But I am afraid. When we came here a few hours ago, the only thing we had in common was the $10,000 we'd get. Now, however, we share something else. The death of Mrs. Lawrence. So far tonight, one of us was almost killed by a falling chandelier. One of us was mysteriously slugged. One of us has been driven to the brink of absolute hysteria. And one of us is dead. Were these accidents? Suicide? And we must stay here for six more hours. Six hours? Six of us. Time enough. Who will be next? How will it happen? Let me ask you a question, Doctor. You were the first one to see my wife there. Did you also see anything that she could have climbed up on and then jumped? No. Did any of them? There was nothing. How then did she get up there so high? Exactly, Mr. Lauren, how? She couldn't have pulled herself up there. She couldn't have dropped from the ceiling. Do you think your wife killed herself? No. She was murdered by one of you. Or you, Mr. Lauren. To deliberately kill someone, you must have a reason. We were all strangers to your wife. Only you had a motive for murder. What husband hasn't at some time wanted to kill his wife? What husband hasn't had a thousand opportunities to do it in such a way so that he'd never be suspected? I'm not such a fool as to hang my wife from a ceiling by a rope. The fact remains that you, or one of us, murdered Mrs. Lauren. And that's a matter for the police. So how do we get the police? That's my point. We can't until morning. What began as a silly party given by an eccentric has now involved us all in murder. For once, Pritchard may be right. If another murder's in the works, let's stop it now. Another murder? Why not? Maybe one of us saw too much. Why should even a millionaire want to give each of us $10,000 to spend one night in a gloomy old house? To see some ghosts have a party? No. Have you finished trying me, Doctor? And is the verdict guilty of murder? Oh, this isn't getting us anywhere. Somebody killed Mrs. Lauren, we know that. One of us is guilty and the rest of us are innocent, okay. Now what we have to do for the next six hours is protect ourselves from each other. Do you really think? I don't think anything. I just know that I'm going to my room. And if anybody comes in, I'll shoot him or her. And if we all stay in our rooms, we'll be safe. Because the innocent will have no reason to leave his room. And the guilty will admit his guilt if he or she does. And we all have guns. And we're all agreed. I wish this night were over. Rooms, guns. I tell you, it doesn't make any difference. They aren't through with us yet. What's the use of saying good night?
Good night, Doctor. their rooms and lock themselves in. Lance, I've been thinking. It was so dark down there. Maybe it wasn't Mr. Lorne. It was him, all right. He tried to kill you, and he did kill his wife. How can you be so sure? She tried to warn me, ask me to help her. The doc thinks he's going to try and kill one of us. Now, there must be a way out of this place, and I'm going to find it and get the police before he does. I'm going with you. What if he finds out you're alive? No, Nora. You're safer here than any place else. Now just lock yourself in and keep quiet. If I find a way out, I'll come back and get you.
And admission of guilt, Doctor? Certainly not. There's either somebody else in this house or one of us has left his room. Did you hear anything? Organ music? That. And someone walking. You got your... Ready? You look downstairs, and I'll look up here. Why not together? There may be only minutes, seconds left of someone's life. Why waste time? Almost over, darling. Every detail was perfect. What's happening? We've done it. A perfect crime. Beautiful. Has she killed him? Not yet. But she will. Get me out of this hanging harness. What's taking that girl so long? What time is it? At first, I couldn't get Nora to want to protect herself with a gun. But after you appeared at the window, everything began to work just as we had planned. You were wonderful. Just the touch that finally drove her into complete hysteria. It'll be worth all of our planning, darling. Where's Nora now? What's happening? On her way to the cellar. So scared, she'll shoot the first thing that moves. And Frederick? On his way to the cellar, too. David, are you sure none of them will suspect us? Of what? An hysterical girl accidentally shoots somebody? Who would suspect that we planned it that way, that we drove her to it? What about my suicide? We're just a ghost party gag. We'll claim it was a dummy, since I'm the only one who touched you. And the caretakers? Well, they had no idea what they were really doing. What about Nora? She's not stupid, you know. Darling, believe me, everything we planned is working perfectly. Nora is sure Frederick murdered you. She thinks Frederick attacked her in the cellar, not me. And now Nora's almost out of her mind with fear. The heads, the music, you're hanging. I tell you, when Frederick walks in there, she'll shoot him. It's taking too long. David, you ought to be there. When you hear the shot, come down to the cellar.
David? David? Was indeed perfect. Only the victim is alive and the murderers are not. It's a pity you didn't know when you started your game of murder that I was playing too. There must be some way to get in here. Well, it's right along here, somewhat. I've shot Mr. Lohr, and he's down in the wine cellar. Alive? I don't think so. It's him. He's alive. You didn't shoot anyone, my dear. I loaded your gun with blanks. I can tell you all now, Trent and my wife were planning to kill me. They failed. Trent tried to throw me in the vat. My wife stumbled and fell. I'm ready for justice to decide if I'm innocent or guilty. Coming for me now. And 
then they'll come for you. The Screaming Skull is a motion picture that reaches its climax in shocking horror. Its impact is so terrifying that it may have an unforeseen effect. It may kill you. Therefore, its producers feel they must assure free burial services to anyone who dies of fright while seeing The Screaming Skull. <laughs> Disappointed for a moment. I did not. It's really lovely. Oh, look. I bet that's the den there. That's right. Is that a bedroom? Yes, it is. Gonna be ours? It'll need some fixing first. It was her room, wasn't it? Yes. 
Come on along, I'll show you the rest of the house. Forbidding now, I suppose, empty like this. But it was usually this way. Shortly after Marion and I were married, she removed all the furniture her parents had left her. This is our home, she used to say, and we must choose everything carefully. Well, we didn't get very far before she died. But now that you're here, it's going to be lovely again. I'll get the things out of storage tomorrow. We're all town at the warehouse. Take care of that, too. You have candles? Sure. It'll be twice as romantic. Speaking of being romantic. I got to carry you over the threshold. where Mickey keeps his gardening things. Who's Mickey? The gardener. He's kept it up the two years I've been away. All by himself? That's right. He must work awfully hard. Oh, he and Marion would spend hours on end working here in the gardens, and up in the greenhouse back there. See, he loved her very much. Sometimes I used to wonder who she was, my wife or Mickey's nursemaid. You know, I don't think he quite believes she's gone. I think he expects her to show up one of these mornings and scold her for neglecting the gardens. You still love her, don't you? No, I'm not jealous. I'm grateful to her. I think to have loved once, really loved, to learn how to love always. Learning it from her, you give again to me. I wish there was some way to think. Who's that? I don't know. They're driving around the back. Come on. Come along. Eric! I see Eric. <laughs> Please stop by to meet your new wife. Oh, Eric, this is a wonderful surprise. It's been a long time. It has. Reverend. Good to see you, Eric. Jenny, this is Mrs. Snow. I'm very happy to meet you. Jenny, this is a lovely surprise. And the Reverend Mr. Snow. Hello, my dear. Oh, she's sweet, Eric. I know. I happen to be going into town. I ran into Mr. Maurer. He told me you were getting back today. And we thought we'd just drop by and bring you something for your dinner. Oh, nice. And it'll save you all the bother of shopping while you're trying to get settled. Then why don't you stay for dinner? Oh, no, not tonight. Oh, no, no, we wouldn't think of that. Oh, now, please say yes. I'd like for you to. It would be like old times. All right, on the condition that I do the cooking. You don't have to. You know, I know that, but I'd love to. Well, there's Mickey. Excuse me, honey. Mickey! Poor Mickey. He keeps this place up like a shrine. Eric told me how he loved Marion. Mickey's father was a gardener here when Marion's mother was alive. Mickey and Marion grew up together here. Jenny, this is Mickey. How do you do, Mickey? I hope we'll be good friends. Well, Mickey. Some of those rose cuttings. Nice seeing you again, Mickey. I'm going to have to get you down to the barber shop one day very soon. Excuse us, Mickey.
Oh, Edwin, now don't break your neck. Oh, you do it, great, oh, Reverend. Don't worry. For God of heavens, honestly, the two of them are just like children. Well, that doesn't look too bad, Eric. Jenny, I hope you have more luck in getting your husband to mine than I've had with mine. You know, you've got to admit it does make the room look better. Very well, Tyson. For penance, you can come and help me with dinner. Now, come on. Edward, you keep Jenny company? Yes, dear. No, Mary, no. Send them away. No. <laughs> oh, she's so very nice, Eric. Jenny? Yes. Isn't she wonderful? Yes. She's not at all like Marion, and I think that's for the best. You know, so many men, when they lose a wife, they try so hard to deny the loss, they marry someone exactly like the first wife. It hardly seems fair using the living to bring back the dead, does it? No, I suppose it doesn't. We make a prison for ourselves out of the past, at least our sentimental wished for past. Mrs. Snow. Yes, dear. There's something I must tell you and the Reverend. Well, of course, Eric. What is it? You see, Jenny has not had a very happy past. Oh? And talking about it or about something that might strongly remind her of it, she's very impressionable. Is there something wrong, Eric? No, not really. You see, she lost her parents many years ago in a very tragic way. And talking about unhappy pasts only She's very impressionable. See, I want her to be happy, Mrs. Snow. Of course you do, and so do we all. Now, how did she lose them? Well, look, I'm not crying, dear. It's just that Mr. Snow and I can help better if we know something about it. They drowned in an accident. Jenny saw it all. Who is Mr. Maurer? Mr. Maurer? Why, oh, he's a lawyer in town. I thought no one knew we were coming. You said you heard from Mr. Maurer? Well, Eric wrote him. He takes care of the estate or what's left of it. Oh, that's right. Eric has to see him tomorrow. Well, Eric's co-executor of the estate along with Mr. Maurer. You see, Marion's death was so sudden that, well, all that was left to Eric was the house and these grounds. Mr. Maurer told me that Eric had found someone very sweet and very kind and with whom he was very much in love. He didn't say enough. How did Marion die? Didn't Eric tell you? I think the subject's rather painful to him. I'd like to make him talk about it. Would you mind telling me? I'd like to know. It was a rainy day. She and Mickey had been working up there in the greenhouse. She left him to go back to the house for a few minutes. The way we pieced it together after the accident is that while she was coming down this path, apparently it began to rain very hard. She must have run along here. We don't know, of course, what happened then. Perhaps she slipped on a leaf. The base of her skull was smashed. It was thought that she hit her head on the edge of the cement wall where we're sitting. And she fell in there. She died in the water. That's where Eric found her ten minutes later. church on Sunday as well. Oh, getting back to church is like moving a mountain. He'll come. Come along, my dear. It's getting late. Eric, thank you very much for bringing Jenny into our lives. Thank you for the dinner. It was a pleasure. Good night. 
night. Good night. Good night. Did you know that Jenny's very wealthy? Oh, yes. Mr. Ma told me in town today. Well, she's not at all like Marion. You know, she's so gentle and timid as if... as if she were afraid of something. I knew you'd like my friends, dear. Hey, what's this? Huh? Just happy, that's all. Oh, come. So happy. Come on. Over. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's called Beast in the Jungle. It's all about a man who waited all of his life for something great and wonderful to happen to him. He had only one good friend. It's a woman whom he confided. And she died. At her grave, he suddenly realized that she was the great and wonderful thing that he'd waited for all of his life. But it was too late then. His memories, like a beast in the jungle, rise up out of the past, overwhelm him. Oh, poor fellow. He doesn't know what he missed. I don't think Mickey looks for her in the pond. Jenny, now stop it. I can't help it, Harry. That bad feeling's come back. I forbid you to 
talk about it. She looked like that, Eric. My mother looked like that. Jenny, Jenny. I can't help it, Eric. Darling, you're just talking yourself into those same old fears. I've got to talk about it, Eric. I have to talk about I it. I forbid you to talk about it now. Just that with you beside me, I'm alive again. I don't want to be sick anymore. Honey, look. Now, you mustn't go on thinking like this. Besides, how could a very poorly done self-portrait upset you so much? I know it's only my own fear. It's my own guilt that I can't get away from. Eric, I'm sorry. Oh, I want you to listen to me. And I want you to believe me. Now, you were sick once, yes, but you were cured. Mickey caused this. You may as well know. He does look for Marion night after night down by that pond. And he probably comes here afterwards. I'm going to speak to Mickey in the morning. Now, don't you see? How simply it's all explained away. But if I also heard a scream, Eric, before when I went to the hospital, I was hearing things. I'm hearing them again. What did you hear? It was a high, strange scream. High, strange scream. Like the peacock's cry? What's that sound like? Come here. Sound like that? You see? It's all very, very real. Such a fool. Feeling better now? bothered with any of Mickey's nightly visits anymore. I've forbidden him to come into the house. Well, I was just nervous last night. I wish you wouldn't take it out on Mickey. Now, he's a child. He must be disciplined. I'd like him to feel I'm his friend. Why don't you do some gardening with him while I'm in town? If he sees you're interested, you win him over quickly enough. Wait a minute. He lists staples mostly. Are you sure you don't want to come in with me? You get more done without me. Got to see about the lights, the phone, the bank, and the warehouse people about that furniture. You know, that cop's just about broken my back. Yeah, don't forget to see Mr. Maurer. I have to see him this evening. It's a bore, but I'll have to see him. Will you be home in time for dinner? I'll wait for you. No, if I'm not, don't you worry, darling. Getting out of Maurer's clutches sometimes requires an act of God. I love you. Cuddly and warm. When I was a little girl, I used to want to be a caterpillar. So I was a very little girl. There you go. Marion must have loved her gardens. We'll keep them lovely for her always. You know what I'd like to do, Mickey? I'd like to pick some of the nicest flowers and take them to her. Would you like that? Yes. 
Eric told me she was near here. Would you show me where? I'm sure it was a great loss to all of you, Mickey. She cries. She cries? In the night. Dead people don't cry, Mickey. I heard her. Heard I don't think he quite expects she's gone. She cries. She cries in the night. I think he expects her to show up one of these mornings. She died in the water. The base of her skull was smashed. She didn't want to die. She died in the water.
else was there. What do you mean, what else? A skull. Jenny. I know there was no skull. Of course not. <sighs> Mickey says Marion cries at night. Why, that childish, stupid... Don't blame him. We both hear the peacock. He, out of his love for Marion, wishes to cry to be from her. I, out of my sickness... Now, darling, we've been all through that nonsense last night. Don't you see? I've never imagined seeing these things before. To just stand there and see it. Never turn out to be nothing. Eric? I want you to call Dr. Ann tomorrow in New York. I want you to take me back. No, Jenny. Now, it may sound selfish, but don't you see, having you to love, I'm happy too. I don't want to lose that. Now, in the morning, Mr. Snow will be here and we'll tell him. He's very comforting. I think he'll agree with me. About what? I think it's Mickey. You see, he hated me from the first. Marion was his friend, and when I married her, he thought I was taking her away from him. And now that she's dead, taken away from him forever, I suppose in that childish mind of his, I'm responsible for that. And now, because you're my wife, and in Marion's house, he hates you, too. I don't think Mickey's responsible. He's not quick enough or clever enough. And who? Myself. It's all in my own mind. We do need somebody else, darling. We need somebody outside of the confusions of our love for each other. Now, the Reverend Snow will be here in the morning. In there. Well, this much is real anyway. Look here, Jenny. You see, this is how you gouged your hand. You say you threw the skull down here where Eric is looking? Yes. Did you find anything, Eric? Nothing yet. Surely, Jenny, you must agree with me that anything as fragile as a skull would have been smashed to bits down there. And Eric has found nothing. And to assume that the skull would move of its own, all the way from there to the driveway door. Come on, Jenny, there's no reason for that. Don't you see, I agree with you. Did Eric tell you I spent over a year in a sanitarium? Oh, Eric told Mrs. Snow that you were very impressionable, but that's all. I know lots of people needing a rest go to sanitariums. This wasn't quite that kind of sanitarium. You see, I grew up loving my father and hating my mother. Well, she never knew it. Something I kept to myself. She was very beautiful. Very gay, like her. Very much. And I knew she resented that I was not more like her. I used to lie awake at night and wish she were dead. Well, that isn't very unusual. I understand many children go through such a period. I was no longer a child. And one day, I got my wish. They were both drowned. I could still hear her scream. I was all alone on the little beach. And all I could see was the overturned boat on the top of the waves. And I kept trying to reach them. And the waves kept throwing me back. And then... I could hear her cries no more. And then hours later, 
men came and searched for the bodies. They were never found. That's when this bad feeling started, this feeling that if I'd really wanted to, I could have saved them, but I didn't. That I really killed them. No, Jenny. You tried. You tried your very best. I did. Singing, begging, praying couldn't make this feeling go away. That's when they took me to the hospital. They told me I was cured. Jenny. They told me I was cured. Mickey! You go on. I'll be there in time for lunch. But where do you think he's gone off to, Harry? Who knows about Mickey? He might be hiding. Have you looked at Marion's grave? Mickey? 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 Find him. No. Where's Jenny? She's with Mrs. Snow on the patio. Eric, I think I should tell you that Jenny has confided in me about the sanitarium. Oh. Does your wife know? I told her Jenny was impressionable, but not that. Well, I haven't said a word to her. Mr. Snow, you can do both Jenny and me a great favor by forgetting she ever told you that. But, Eric, if it helps explain, it explains nothing. If I were you, Eric, I take her away. If she's so impressionable and that house frightens her so much, why subject her to it? Look, I can't do a thing like that. It'd be the worst thing for her. Mr. Snow, it would be admitting she was sick again. I want her to be happy. We'll stay here. Perhaps you know best, Eric. See, I've got a simple and old-fashioned piece of philosophy. The only cure for her fear is to teach her she's loved. I mean, really loved. And I love her so much. God bless you for that, Eric. She's a very fortunate woman having someone like you to care for her. Be night soon. Oh, Jenny, Jenny. I'm sorry. Darling, you've got to believe it will not happen again. Ever. Mickey! Mickey! Eric! doing that skull. Stop it, it wasn't his Where did you get it? Leave him alone. I'll take care of this, Jenny. Now, I know you don't like me, Mickey. I know you don't need to get us to leave here. This idiotic attempt to scare us as if we were children. It was you, wasn't it? Wasn't it? No, not me, not me. Uh, get out of here, get out of here. Oh.
wish you'd apologize to him. You know as well as I do, it's not his fault. It's all in my own mind. Jenny, I'm going to do something. And you're going to help me do it. What's that? That portrait upstairs. It reminds you of your mother. Yes. You were fine until you saw it. Now it has you all preoccupied with memories of the past. We're going to burn it. That's precious to you, Eric. The picture means nothing to me. I want you to be happy. We can't be until this fear is out of our lives. All right, Jenny. Go on, Jenny. ashes stand overnight, and the brush in these hills is a regular tinderbox. You want to help me? Ah, you feeling better? It's as if I destroyed her with my own hands. She'll come back, and She'll come back. Darling, if you go on talking that way, you destroy the whole purpose. Now, the thing is out of the house, and it's over. You just give it half a chance, and you'll begin to forget it. And if you'll just spread those ashes out a little for me, I'll get the water to it. That's it. There's no skull there, darling. There is no skull there, Jenny. Darling, there's no skull there. There's no skull. Be able to catch a plane tonight? When we get into town, I will call Mr. Maurer. He'll arrange a midnight plane. I thought there'd be more time. Time for so many wonderful things. It's gonna be all right. Of course. 
It's just me. It's going to be all right. Good evening, my dear. Hello. Mrs. Snow's hands thought you might like some fresh eggs for your breakfast in the morning. Hello, Eric. This is a surprise. Those hens labored mightily, as you can see. Fine. I'll take them. You'll excuse me, dear. What is it, Eric? I've got to take Jenny away. That hospital she was in before. It happened again? I thought it would help her if we got rid of that portrait. You know the one? Yes. Well, we burned it. She saw a skull in the ashes. You were there? I saw nothing, of course. Of course. And I thought it was Mickey. But when I was there myself and I saw... Mr. Snow, there's something I've never told you. I've never told anybody. But when Jenny was put away in that hospital, she tried to do away with herself. I'm terribly afraid. You think she might try it again? I know she will, unless I get her back to that hospital. When are you going? Tonight. We shall miss you. Mrs. Snow and I have grown very fond of Jenny. Yes, and she of you. I don't suppose you'll be coming back here again, Eric? No. Never. I'll miss him and his wife. He's very kind. Yes? When I said goodbye to him just now, he tried to talk me out of what I saw. Oh. He said he thought the skull was real. He's going to bring some men in the morning to search the estate. Where? Everywhere. He was just talking, trying to be kind. I suppose. I'll go upstairs and pack. You want to come with me? I'll be up in a minute. Put it in the pond, you must have. Where is it? I don't know. I don't know. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. I don't Where is it? I don't know. Tell me the truth. You took it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Edward, in the name of heaven. Mickey, where did you find this? In pond. Well, who put it there? He did. Eric? He did. Then there was a skull. But Eric said that he didn't see it when Jenny saw it. I know. Oh, but why should Eric lie like that? Mickey, those other times with the skull, did you do it? No. Mickey, you've never lied to me before. Lying is a sin. You understand that? You must not lie to me now. Did you do it, Mickey, all those other times? No. I simply do not understand that. If it wasn't Mickey... And it wasn't her imagination. But why would Eric do such a thing? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, what do you think we should do about it? We're going back there, to that house. Mickey? Eric and I are leaving, Mickey. I'd like to say goodbye. I'd like to leave as your friend, Mickey. Mickey?
Jenny, are you all right? Oh, Jenny. Eric. Eric, try. Shh. Oh, Where I is Eric? Don't, don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'll find him. It's all right, Edward. Now be careful. Did he do? Your money. The question is now, did Marion die in an accident? I suppose we'll never know. Gone. Rest. 